But anyway, so moving along, um, we'll jump into movies one time. So, uh, yeah. you saw I Love You, Daddy. Um, I remember you mentioned this to me. Um, I think it was a few episodes ago. So, yeah. you want know, to run through what I Love You, Daddy is about? All right. So yeah. So basically, what it is, is the latest film by comedian Louis C.K. Uh-huh. And it's about yeah, he's a Hollywood writer, well, TV writer, and. He has a daughter played by Chloe Grace Moretz. And so they live in with the daughter, the daughter moving with him. And then she uh, basically gets into, well, he meets and he meets, he, fall, he kind of falls to this woman who's an actress. He's looking for an actress for, the, for his movie. And a big famous actress come in and she invited him to a party. And then the daughter, he, he also brought the daughter along. The daughter met. Uh, with a, a filmmaker who he really likes, big big fan of the filmmaker, and he, the, the problem is that the filmmaker has history with child predation. Right. And then, so the, but the daughter take a liking to the filmmaker, so he get worried about that. Right. <laughs> That's the entire premise of it, and it's about a relationship with his daughter, and why it's called I Love You, Daddy, is because she constantly says that. But the, his, well, his, no, his, his second wife or the second woman he used with, she pointed out to him. By the way, that this woman is always play, you know, this chick always be in the shows. Now she was his wife in Lucky Louie. And then she was his recurring friend in the show Lou. Okay. And she kind of pointed out the fact that if, you, if your daughter constantly telling you, I love you, that means you're not doing something right. You, you, you do, you're not coming down on her or, buying, or applying any kind of discipline to her or something along those lines. Right. And yeah, that's pretty much the general premise of the show. So here's the problem. Yeah, what's uh, the problem? Problem is, well, Louis C.K. himself, he got into trouble for uh, sexual, sexual, mis- sexual, yeah, mis- sexual misconduct. Yeah, misconduct, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I forget the exact details of the scenario before. I understand he he coerced um, under studies of good women who were working for him into watching him masturbate. Wow, <laughs> or something along those lines, and he kind of the thing is he kind of already admitted or or, or somewhat somewhat confessed to these things in uh in his stand up material, but it was like treated as well half of a joke, right? Halfway kind of a thing, but yeah, for one understand it was fully real, and well, people saying well he didn't do anything wrong, but for what for what I gather is that he it was implied he used his power and his position to to he, I don't think he forced forced forced, but it was like a strong coercion. You know, it's like the, your, your boss tell you to do something kind of thing. But they enforce it. They didn't power gun to your head. Right. Or they didn't really wield the power. But they wield the power. He wield his power. He wielded his power to, to, to do this or set up these scenarios. And that kind of game does a trouble. He lost a lot of deals. Uh, from what I understand, he lost. Well, the show, got, the show from FX has ended because of this. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, and then he had a, there was an animated show you're supposed to do for TBS and that got got scrapped as well because of the fallout from this right and uh, Louis, Louis even before this was like a weird creative space he only had this movie coming out as a hype and then he did a show a kind of a kind of weird sitcom kind of show that was a kind of mix between theater and sitcom that didn't work at all but right. it was one of those art things that you know just done for the sake of art yeah but it, from what I understand it wasn't popular at all but whatever um, and also look at that, the, the wiki page right now I yeah. you know I honestly forgot that he directed Pudi Tang you know, <laughs> goddamn classic. Uh, <laughs> one of those so dumb it's good, so bad yeah, it's good yeah, kind of movies. Yeah, yeah, it's one yeah, of those. Yeah, it's one yeah, of those. And it's, yeah. Anyway, um, so I well, the, the thing is, so this was kind of like how um, this movie from last year was uh, Dirt of a Nation, right? Where the director had a lot of hype, it looked good, and then the director this whole thing about his past, you know, involving rape, get blew up on, and he apparently have added. A rape scene in the movie that didn't exist at all which was like I, le- I learned that recently I didn't know that at all um, and it's really unfortunate so it, it poisoned the whole discussion about what he wanted to talk about now right. and a lot of people like see this movie and say boy this is Louis trying to gaslight everybody you know when you make a movie about a thing it it might make people less likely to think that he was involved in that thing maybe right um, and that's the unfortunate part about it um, but even without the shadow of the scandal, I'll try to review the movie. Let's just say without the shadow of the scandal, I'm going to try to talk about it. Um, basically, it's, it's, it's Louis's interpretation of, like, for lack of a better term, I don't know if you know what the term means, Kafka-esque. Um, the Kafka-esque nature of the female mind. It's, it's, it's all about this kind of confusing 
aspect, you're not sure what was the rules, it everything kind of nebulous, and then the the central message was a kind of trade off for being you know for the greater good because the daughter keeps saying I love you, daddy, because he's he's really spoiling the daughter and don't say no to her. Right. And he had to kind of put his foot, quote unquote, put his foot down about you know who the daughter could see or not, but it, it, because the daughter is seventeen, um, and not. Not, and she kind of old, so you're not sure if they get into the aspect of what um, consent means, you know, if consent matters because she, she's so close to 18. And, you know, there's a whole part of the discussion involving Roseburn's character where Roseburn escape, explains that she was 15 when she got, it, got involved with somebody who was 50 years old. And so the question is, you know, Louis' character was outright saying, no, you, you were raped. Like, that is rape. And she was saying, uh, no, it's not because I, I, was, I know what I was doing. And it could get into that big debate whether or not women involved in this or not. And so it's unclear how <coughs> it's played out from his standpoint. That's right. what he's trying to go for. And well, yeah, everything, the whole thing is shot in this 40s black and white transatlantic pastiche, you know, kind of like Casablanca or, you know, those movies. Right. Everything had that same style of music and and played out in the black and white and everything is shot in that way. Oh, and the transitions, way. a lot of um. Like same transitions, yeah. yeah. Same kind of you know, same music and uh. Oh, oh by the way, the, the old man is played by um John Malkovich. Oh, okay, is, him. Yeah, right. He's pretty good. He's yeah. pretty okay. good in this action. So and the the aesthetic of it, the the sort of forty style, is that um like for parody reasons or satire? Right. I actually didn't serve the film as much as I thought it would frankly because i get what they're trying to do like well the joke the, the kind of the running subtext at that maybe is that well is our older time and this is how we looked at the past in this older time because they have some shots that really look like especially with roseburn they really look like you know they put vaseline on the lens kind of thing now. right right and i i get what you're trying to go for with that but it to me the movie could have been shot in a modern approach and style and it would have been fine mm-hmm. like it would, it would have the same way in my opinion but I get why you were trying to go for it. Uh, right. It didn't really serve film as much as I thought it would. Um, it had some genuinely funny moments, and it had some, well, I'll say, uh, it, when it comes to conversations, and conversations supposed to be powerful, it had a little bit of bad blocking at times. Okay. Right? Um, and then, the, the, again, the central message is a bit muddled, and now it's even more muddled because of Lucy K himself. Even without that, even without the shadow of his scandal, it's still very muddled. Because I get what he's trying to come for, because he kind of basically implying that women don't really... Have, women don't settle on what they consider you know the moral line right right women themselves do seem to have that clear so that makes supposedly men unclear about the situation and i can understand that i kind of get that especially encountering people who call themselves feminists as opposed to liberals and that big intersectionality argument where yeah i've encountered uh women who who operate on both ends of that argument and you get the feeling that is is more like a kind of good cup, bad cup kind of double play happening to you now. Mm-hmm. That you not supposed to really be making any decisions on this matter and you just have to listen to what women say. I've encountered plenty of people on both sides of that. Um, and they, 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 the movie does that. So you have Roseman's character who operates with the sophistry of, well, no, a woman, even if she's underage, could still be um, have proper agency in the matter of her own sexual affairs. And then other people say, no, 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 if you, if you go to underage girl, period, that's rape, no matter what. Right. And the thing is, you have noticed the movie, and the movie again, he's trying to get, I think this is what he's trying to go for. In the movie, he himself, you notice, no women actually talk to each other in any depth about what's going on. They'll talk about, they'll talk to each other in very shallow means, but no women actually have any debate about this stuff. Right? Yeah, okay. you notice that. Hmm. He himself, in, in deep conversations with this stuff, the men, well, he, there's a scene with he and John Markovich, he gets into a deep conversation about this stuff. Right. No women actually talk to each other with this stuff. It's him talking to other women on both sides of the discussion. So I could I could get why he would be confused and he's an idiot. Characters are total moron. Um it have that kind of go on girl vibe to it. You remember Ben Affleck's character? Yeah, yeah. That it have that. That vibe to to to, to it. And it's you, you, you could get into that moral where people could slip into this moral problem where people could exploit and abuse that shit in that domain. And that is where it goes into. And well, to get into the just the overall aspect of the Me Too campaign and all of this stuff, yeah. Sorry to say it, I I understand. I kind of get where you're coming from because sorry to say it, I can't take a lot of this seriously simply because well, 
Donald Trump is president and 54% of white women voted for him. Mm -hmm. It'll change the fact that a lot of this stuff is wrong, but I can't take the moral indignation seriously until you sort that out. So even if you want to say liberal women, and well, it's, it's really white women overwhelmingly because it's white women who vote for the man, black women, 95% vote for the man. And we could even get into the Roy Moore, you know, political dimension of it where you have a person who's an accused pedophile and still some 60 some percent of white women vote for the man still in Alabama. If, here's the thing, if white women who conservative, you want to say that they still on the bad side of that moral argument, you have to answer the question, well, how come you can't get them on your side of this argument before you, you target black people and other men and all this other stuff. Right. Right. Why does you can't get these out? Why does you can't suss out white women in the discussion? And it's, it's kind of like with religion in a sense. I kind of see it in that way. Is that you, ca you can't address your own internal squabbles with religion, but you're telling people to convert to your religion. Same thing. That's all yeah. I kind of see it. Ideologically. Kind, kind, kind of hip, uh, hip, sorry, kind of uh, hypocritical in a way. Well, well kind of, in a sense, of, there's, kind of, a, there's, yeah. a, there's a kind of there's a kind of second order moral hypocrisy to it. In mm. a sense, it's not that your your moral indignation is not um, correct. It's not that it's not unfounded. I I look, Harvey Weinstein is a fucking scumbag. I'm not saying he isn't, right? Kevin Spacey is a complete scumbag. I'm not saying he isn't. That is not the point. The point is, the you have to suss out that moral paradigm first before you address it. And it have way too many. Sorry to say it, it have way too many white women who go still cater to these things blindly and you have to answer that question and that question i've never heard a clear answer to that other than well fuck them white women <laughs> you, know, that's well. it. You, can't, you don't have an answer because you don't that's, uh, that's how i see it that's how i see it and i get where louis coming from with the movie mm -hmm. louis still scummy louis still a shit, shit, shit dude because of this, of this i really really was really goddamn disappointed when i heard all of this play out and it really undermines the movie um overall i'll give the movie a low low Low. Like something like, <laughs> not, not too low, but a low CC8. Like a CC8. Right? I right. give it that. Right. I give it a CC8. It's still, it's still of its moments, um, but overall, you know, something along the lines of a 5 out of 10, five out of ten kind of thing. It's not, that, it's not the worst thing ever, but it's not that good even without the scandal. Even if, if, if we never found out all of the stuff about Louis, or we didn't do all of that shit, it would still, still be kind of a, a mediocre movie overall, and a really mixed message. Movie. And. You have to, I, 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 that is one big thing I have to think, especially white women. Really a white woman problem because, again, black women very clear on their moral situations about <laughs> what going on. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why it is that so many white women voted for people who are admitted pussy grabbers and pedophiles, apparently, and very strongly accused with a ton of evidence against, against them, pedophiles, and they still voting for them overwhelmingly. So, yeah, <laughs> that is my own thing. That right. is about it. Anyway, that's my review. There's nothing much to talk about because... Oh, by the way, I, I, I blatantly watched this online because we're <laughs> not going to see the shit before. No, no, no. You're not going to see that down here. What? Oh, psh, psh. Well, it's not, not going to be coming out before. I doubt it'll be, be releasing at all. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, because... That's bad. Be, wow. Can, yeah, yeah. Like, it already have a rating and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, it's just a total backpedal in the middle of the event now. Right. So... Yeah, it must like go have with Kevin Spacey and, and all the money in the world. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Kev Christopher Plummer, yeah, are nominated for the Globe, Globe, which is like an extra fuck you for Kevin Spacey. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right. But that's it. That's just my, my two cents on that whole situation and the movie. I didn't hear the movie. It had its moments. It was fine. Charlie Day was funny in it. Yes, okay. Oh, well, Charlie Day was in it. All right. I hear. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's pretty funny. Okay, cool. All right, so um, I will move along with uh, a movie that um, well, you saw, you said you saw piece of it, um, right. but I well, yeah, of course I saw the full things, of course, because yeah. I will be talking about it here. Um, a ghost story, yeah. which, despite its title, is actually a drama, well, a supernatural drama. Um, the major, the two major actors in this film, um, uh, Casey Affleck and Rooney Mara, or I should say, Oscar right. winner. Casey Affleck and oh, Oscar God, nominee speak yeah. Rooney Mara. Speak it up, sexual thing. Eh? God, we bring you up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trouble with some of that shit too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's some other people in the in the film as well, but it's really about these two. Well, thematically, it's about these two. Even though, yeah. and I'll get, I'll talk, I'll I'll mention why actually when I actually when I talk about the film, even right. though they're not in the film, you don't see them like on screen. They still are the centerpiece of the um, of this movie here. Okay. So um, 
these two these two characters um similar to like what they did with um darren Ar- aronofsky's mother they aren't named the characters so right. um it's basically a husband and wife so casey is a musician um he plays guitar he plays piano he just makes music right and he could sing as well um which reminds me i need to find out if those were casey's actual vocals because there's a moment okay. where he actually sings a song right um and Rooney is his wife they move into a small house I think it's in Dallas around that area and right. we've just basically seen them in this house how they you know um, getting along with each other and whatnot but the thing is with um, with Casey was Casey's character is that he seems to be very deep into his music he has a little issue he has issues actually communicating with his wife um, especially when it's clear that something's going on with her with something's going on with the marriage um, and he uses music to kind of express himself actually but it's just that she kind of lets him do his thing but he kind of tends to get too preoccupied with the music so right. um, one day actually um, it just kind of cuts to this moment uh, Casey gets involved in a car accident he dies and um, his well he's carried in the mortuary um, his wife comes and see what happened and he has this uh, well, the white sheet over him so she looks yes. at him and is like well yes he's dead she walks out right. of the room and then right afterwards this is like one of um of quite a, a great um quite well not a large amount but some very well made very well put together um long takes uh casey returns like he just kind of right. rises from the dead you know so to speak um right. and throughout this movie we see him wearing this white sheet um see for like these two black eyes well these two suck um sort of um suck not circular actually more like um elliptical oval, yeah, oval um, yeah, yeah, yeah. eyes really and i was watching it i was like well you know if they were going for the whole charlie brown vibe this would be like you know drawn in eyes now but no it's actually they, they actually it looks like they actually cut Stick all out. the eyes here they, like they cut right. it out and actually had like some like maybe there was like a black mask over um over Casey's face. I need to watch right, like right. a behind the scenes of it. So it's yeah. So like point is, it doesn't feel like it's just holes they cut in. It looks like if you're looking, there's somebody else peeking through those those holes basically. Right. Um. So he goes back home. Um. We. Um. He's looking at how his wife is dealing with his death. You know, she's by herself now, and you know, it's just day by day, just her, just him watching her. Um. Of course, he can't really see anything. He doesn't really know how to communicate with her anymore because he's dead. Um. Even though, unfortunately, later on, he learns that he could actually move, um, actually could touch objects and, you know, make them fall to the ground and whatnot. Um, he could actually play around with, like, electricity because there's a couple of moments where he passes by this light bulb and, you know, there's, like, a, this little electricity, little overload that takes place in the in the bulb itself every time he's around. Right. Um, but he's not really aware of that. He's just kind of, like, moving about, watching, uh, watching his wife. Um, and then there's this little subplot, um, which... I was wondering where it was going to go with it, but it actually pays off um, quite emotionally, in my opinion. Um, where the neighbor's house, there's actually a ghost in there. And okay. that ghost actually communicates with him. But it's, bas- it's be- like they- basically, they're not speaking, actually. Like, they don't speak at all. But um, you see like subtitles underneath, and they just kind of move their arms a little bit. Now. So it's like, well, they kind of understand what, what um, the other person is saying, even though their lips aren't moving. Right. So, uh, what was pretty interesting, but this is just a minor spoiler, but you kind of see it coming. Um, Rooney does eventually move on. She leaves the house, and the house is just like, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say haunted, but um, we do see throughout the film a couple more um, sets of characters come into this house. Um, one really to inhabit it, to live in it, and that's where we get sort of a little haunted house little segment there. And the, right. the other one is just like this little party that takes place where this one particular guy starts to wax all this existential poetic stuff about life and really just about our place in the universe. And, you know, this is just kind of brings up one particular theme. This the major theme of the story. Um, right. I would confess, though, that it does feel like they just had this moment to kind of explain to the audience, okay, this is what this story is really about. He's talking about basically like, you know, we all leave something behind but right. it's not like people are going to remember you anyway you know like as years and you know decades and centuries go by eventually people might forget who you are what you did but you, if you happen to leave back something behind it may 
impact or change somebody you know and he used um i think it's beethoven's music for example uh yeah. where he happened to make a lot of music but you know he died and it's like well all right he's dead but somehow his music still lives on and his name lived on because of that but it's not guaranteed that in the years to come people are going to remember beethoven's name but somehow if you play that music it's still going to inspire you to do the same thing to actually create and leave behind your own legacy now i thought that was like a powerful message um yeah. but what really what really amazed me about this movie um was overall this this movie is like this this really profound but really melancholy as well um look like this existential look at life now you know um because the ghost himself he and the way how um the film is edited like all right so you're familiar with like the last few minutes of 2001 a space odyssey right yeah, yeah. where care Dulia's characters in the room and then he looks one side and then he sees him on the bed then he looks then he cut to that person sorry he goes to the table he's eating the food and then he Mom, looks he sees his old self and all that kind of stuff and by the way it was the actor himself who came up with the idea which was how do i show the progression of this um character over the course of a few minutes which is right. you have the character turn left and then you see his old self and then you cut to that old self and then you have that character cut um turn left or, or turn right or whatever so it's basically through the movement of the character and then time jumps to basically and that's how um, his character works as he goes is that he would look across or he would move here or he would move across there he would move through a wall and then time passes so we're seeing the progression of time just going from year to year there's even a moment where he goes to the past as well um, and then right. goes back to the present as well um, so jumping into the review um, like I said before this is a very profound film in my opinion I didn't expect right. the film to go this direction like I thought it was just going to be about Casey trying to connect with his wife but then right. when his wife leaves which of course makes perfect sense you know because we're human you know we even if we want to hold on to someone um, someone's debt you can't you eventually have to move on and I love how they express that with the character even with little to no dialogue actually it just kind of happens and it makes sense you know what I mean um, and this is an, uh, one thing that I love about the movie is that how um, it expresses certain things without dialogue, without the need of dialogue. It's just simple visuals to express a mood or what's going on. There's one scene in particular. Um, this is this is I'll call this the pie eating scene. This is one of the moments I would say where people might look at this movie and be like, "This is pretentious art house bullshit." Yeah. And it's just basically a long take, a long take. Of Rooney sitting down like on the floor of um, of uh, the living room actually I was gonna say the kitchen the living room eating a pie that a friend left for I think it's a friend or one of her relatives or whatever and she's eating this pie and on the right hand of the the right side of the frame uh, Casey is standing up there and props to how Casey could just stand there still eh, without no movement or anything like that and he's just there in, in the right side while she's eating this pie. And I'm watching this thing and I'm kind of amazed at it. I wasn't bored by it, but I was amazed that the director, um, David Laurie, would actually decide to shoot a scene like this now. Because like I said, people will watch this and be like, well, you know, this is pretentious. Why are yeah. we having these long takes of nothing going on now? But is what is what is really trying to say you know and you know simply what it's trying to say is how people deal with loss you know her in her case she's eating 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 and then at the end um the the actual scene she runs to the bathroom and vomits so you know okay. you could kind of look at that as you know how people deal with with cope with loss you know um eating and you know overeating or under eat um you know bulimia and all that kind of stuff it was just this simple simple little um uh, simple stuff that happened in these scenes but it says so much when you look deep into it um performance wise i thought that uh Rooney Mara was was great as well the moments that she's on screen um you do feel her sadness and her loss when her husband dies um casey though kills it and this is another thing that people might say oh well this is you know you're just giving praise to a guy who just has a white sheet on him for like the majority of the movie right but for what they were going for and I'm not saying it was a simple rule to do it. Like, like I said before, there's a moment where the man just had to stand still for like four or five straight minutes while a woman is eating a pie. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it sounds dumb when I, when I describe it. But when you see it, it will make sense. Context, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. context of it. That's the thing. Um, I thought that he was great as a character. And, you know, with Casey, 
Um, even though I'm not the biggest, um, I, like I don't know all of his work, but I noticed this with Manchester by the Sea, which I reviewed last year. Uh, was it earlier this year? I think it was. Yeah, earlier this year. He has this kind of soft spoken kind of voice. So I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm okay. You know what I mean? Right. I thought it would work with his character because like it's, he's, a, he's like the type of person who doesn't talk that much. You know, he's always to himself, even though he's married. And you know, he does. There are these really genuinely warm moments. There's one moment in particular. Um, I think it's like the first long take where it's just him and his wife on a bed just, just cuddle together, right? And they just, you know, kissing, pecking really. They're not really doing anything much. But then the, the following scene is when the accident takes place. And I thought that I would, you know, just in the context of what's going on there because you're watching the scene right. for in, for example, wondering, well, it's just two, three minutes of them in bed, a close-up. What's going on? But then the following shot and when you see what happens, it's like, oh, now yeah. I see why they do that, right? Um, but yes, those moments with, with, with Casey as the ghost though, that really made this film really impactful for me. Um, especially in like after Rooney leaves and then well after the, the, the um, party that takes place where the guy was talking all this existential stuff. Is where you really see Casey all alone by and you really feel so sad and so sorry for him, you know what I mean? And yeah. you know, um for you know, for people who don't like to think about death now, you know. It kind of brings up this really obvious, but something that people don't want to, you know, really don't want to acknowledge, but it's the truth, you know, born alone, die alone, you know, you're eventually going to be by yourself when you die, you know, yeah. and just seeing it visually on screen was like really sad, because you do feel for him, because you, you're seeing time passing, there's literally a moment where his house that he was living in all this time was demolished. And he's just there right. waiting for somebody to come. He's waiting for his wife to, to return, but the house is demolished. And it's just him standing up in it, there in the middle of this rubble. And that just right. says so much about where he is right now. And he can't really do anything about it, which is even more sad. He's dead. He can't go back to tell his wife how he felt. You know, he has to move on. But he kind of doesn't want to because, you know, he's just holding on to, to, you know, to life, even though technically he's dead. And to me, that was like the, the, the strongest message of this whole show. Um, even though he's dead, he still wants to hold on to, you know, to his earthly existence, you know, even though people can't see him, and even though time is passing by, and he can't do anything about it. There's even a moment where he tries to kill himself, and then he ends up in the past, and he's seeing how time is, you know, even though it's simple, but eventually people do die, and people sometimes die in the most horrible way, you know, horrible way, sorry, but life goes on, you know what I mean? And he himself has to move on. I don't want to spoil yeah. anything else beyond that, but basically that's the point. That's one of many points on um, of this movie. So, right. this is clearly an indie film. Um, I mean, it's from E24, and this was one that a lot of people have been hyping up, and I do see why people have been hyping it up, and I would say this, though. Even though it's not going to be in my top 10, this is definitely going to be in my top list, like probably within the 11 and 17 but you know many people put it in the top five number one best movie of the year and i don't blame them because this is actually a really fantastic movie for it's very low-key very low budget but for what it did with its budget for what it does simply that by just showing you imagery um and just force it well just encouraging you the viewer to just look closely at what's going on to really feel what's going on you know what i mean it's not like even though there's that one moment where the guy is talking all this stuff, but he's not like directly telling you this is what the story is about. It's just his perspective on our existence in life. And you know, you could just look at it that way, you know, look at it as um how you look at that, how you perceive that. Um right. when you do die, is it is that the end or is there some sort of purgatory or are you just gonna right, yeah. exist in earth until judgment day or whatever it is you want to believe you know and i like that the film didn't go all heavy-handed and telling you well there's heaven at the end and all that kind of stuff but it just shows this character who has died and how he's dealing it and dealing with it sorry and it's sad it's just really sad to look at but very very intriguing and very engaging as well and finally i'll say this before i get to um rating the music score for this music though one of the best scores i've heard all year because similar to 2001 it does feel very ambient it does feel like it's just evoking all these emotions and it's just like it kind of varies on classical it might do like a little electronic music as well and it's just this mood music basically is that and it works for 
every scene um, where there's music. There's even a moment where, like, in the middle of the scene, the song ends, and then it just kind of segues into the next song. So it feels kind of like a rock opera in a way, where every song on this uh, on this score on this soundtrack is meant is is about something. It's about the character. It's about something that's going on. It's not just yeah. there in the background to just you know make you feel a kind of way. It's there for a purpose. Um, Daniel Hart, who actually um, composed the score, I thought did an excellent job with this. I absolutely love the score. Um, yeah. And yeah, what more can I say, though? Like, I wouldn't say I was completely blown away by this, but this is one, though, that um, if you love indie film, if you're just looking for something a little bit different, something that will make you think, and yeah, just generally a really meditative look at life and death, um, yeah, I strongly recommend that you check this out. So for yeah. me, I would give this a decent, uh, strong four to five stars. Um, nice. It does not say it, it doesn't um, oversee its welcome. It does what it's supposed to do. It says what it's supposed to say, even with... Um, not even with a limited amount of dialogue and yes even though the actors as in Casey and Rooney aren't there for the majority of the film you do feel their presence especially Casey who like I said just has to have this white sheet over him but even with that you get so much with his character you really do feel his loneliness Um, and you do feel sorry for him as well it's like well and it's not like he looked for it it's not like he he did some kind of shit he died and it just happened and he can't do anything about it. He can't go back in time to, to, um, to talk to his wife or, you know, to make things up with her. You know, life is done for him. So now what? What do you do? Do you yeah. hold on for their life, you know, quote, unquote, or do you just move on? You know what I mean? And I love how the film really expressed that. So the center strong four to five for me, this is going to be in my list for sure. It's not going to be in my top 10, unfortunately, because I saw much more better movies, in my opinion. But right. you know, if you if you love the indie non blockbuster stuff, then you're gonna love this one. Um, I'll just say this finally. Don't let those long takes and like that pie scene fool you. This is not right. pretentious art house bullshit at all. This okay. this story does have a message. It does have powerful themes as well and stuff that's gonna resonate with you long after you see this film. So, yeah, give this one a look, man. You're gonna love it. Okay. Right. Right. I okay, but well, I mean, I, I come down on um, Green Days, but even for having bad use of long takes, so I'll see if this film had the same problem. Yeah, or at least the framing of the shots, I would say, is way okay. better, way better. Okay, okay, oh, right. yeah, and it's for a purpose, eh? that's what I love. Right, okay, right. So, moving along from a great indie film to a shitty Hollywood film, yeah. big budget film. <sighs> Underworld Blood Wars. Yeah. Yeah, this came out very early in the year. Well, like, yeah. in, well, in, in, in like very early January. Very yeah, early yeah. January. I I saw it then it didn't need to be talked about because it's so terrible. <laughs> I know, right? I, I just I just skipped it. I yeah. don't worry about it. Um so this kinda like my my history with the with the series. Uh, it's it's not I'm not gonna take too too much time with it anyway. Um I fancied the first one. It yeah, wasn't great by a long shot, but I love the song. yeah I love the idea of this modern day war between vampires and lichens. Um, <laughs> yeah, even though it was kind of um, cliche with the sort of S and M sort of black leather outfits right, that and everybody it was, was little, rocking. Little Matrix influence. Yeah, yeah especially with yeah. Kate Beckinsale's character and you know this kind of stuff that she does, the gun cutter scenes, whatever you want to call it. That. Right. Um, but I love I love the idea of it. It was like a this interesting take on you know these horror um, subgenres basically um, yeah. I like the little subplot there involving um, Michael I think that was his name who became like yeah. the, the hybrid character that um, that Selene falls in love with you know all yeah. that jazz um, what else boy? so yeah you're, you're right it really does feel like um, it, it was coming off right after um, the first Matrix movie you know, right. so you know, it, it was, it was, it's, it's those kind of shows you look at and be like, yeah, right. Well, actually, I, I, I lie. It's actually the same year when Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions came out, so two thousand three, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah. So around that same time, um, one thing I, that I didn't really like about it, and it kind of carried on through all the other movies, was just how it tried so hard to create this, you know, the world building. There, you know. You have to talk about, well, the descendant of this guy betrayed yeah, this guy yeah. and there was this well, lineage yeah. and this blood ties and blood fields. I mean, that, that, and it's we, like, we, we, bro. You know, this, this, is, this is foreshadowed. <laughs> this is foreshadowed for our Star Wars reviewer. Eh? Because, boy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's some sluggy-ass world building and law building. 
Yeah, it, it, it did, it did. We'll admit that, yeah. You know, it's all these moments where you have to stop and tell us, well, this is what Marcus did, and this is what his character did, mm -hmm. and this yeah. is why we fight, and, you know, this is how the war will end, and it's like, come on. Y'all, they're taking this thing way, way, way too seriously. Just be a dumb shoot 'em up now with vampires and werewolves, please, right? So, <laughs> um, cut to three years later, we had Underworld Evolution, which, um, for some reason, I don't really remember that much of. I don't remember liking it as much, even though like one of my friends say he loved that. He thinks it's like the best Underworld movie. But to me, oh, I no, saw it. One? Yeah, the second one, Evolution. I yeah. saw it. I was just like, well, all right, yeah, cool. But yeah, this came out went for me. Yeah, it came out went for me. One, but one thing I did like though, one thing I thought was really clever, is that near any end, somehow because I forget, Selena's a day walker. No. She becomes right. a Daywalker, no, something with blood, and I don't know, maybe she drinks some blood or something, I don't know. But she becomes a Daywalker in the end, so I was like, okay, cool, well, alright. This is this is interesting, though. This is progressing the, the story. Okay, let's see where this, um, this, this series go from there. And then we had Rise of the Lycans, right. which was, in retrospect, a pretty pointless prequel <laughs> to the series. You know, it was about it was about the lichens now and how the war started and something with Celine's um someone related to Celine or some kind of thing. So um the, the actress who was in it, uh what was the name boy? Um I can't, I can't remember, okay? I I'd be a little Oh gosh, Ru uh, Runa Mitra. Um okay. yeah, she was in it as well. Yeah, and it was all yeah, it was just once again the same stuff that I didn't like about the series. All this backstory, all this stuff with my father did this and my father betrayed him and my brother aligned with these guys and the Lycans betrayed this and all this stuff that you don't care about. You don't care about none of this stuff. You know what I mean? And then cut to three years later in 2012 and I actually did a written review for this one. This was Underworld Awakening. So I went into this thing like, yeah, well, Celine's a day walker. No, we're back to the story. So let me right. see what they're going to do next. Right. The, the whole movie set at night. So it don't even matter. It don't right. even matter. The first 10 minutes of that movie felt like the third act of our action film journey. Swear to God. It was just all these random action scenes that just trying to tie in. And then they had the story now where Michael and Celine had a daughter. And right. now the Lycans and the, the vampires want the daughter because yeah, sluggy, of her blood yeah, and all that kind of stuff. And about this blood thing, I'll bring this up with Blood Wars. One thing that I hated about the franchise is this whole dumb idea that when I suck your blood, I or if it's a vampire's blood that I'm drinking, I'm instantly going to see flashbacks that's going to tell the right. viewer, oh, well, this is why this matters. Right. I was like... Or just just all from drinking blood drinking vampires blood or, or lichen blood you're gonna see all this stuff you're gonna see all these flashbacks and I'm just supposed to be like well okay well we should care about this but it's dumb when you think about it blood should not do that even though it's fantasy but whatever it, it, that's dumb so yeah um, on the yeah. World Awakening was a waste of time for me um, to me it felt like like if you were adapting this show for, for television this would have been the pilot right. episode it really did exactly. feel like it's, a it's, pilot it's episode. Something, yeah, it's, it's, it's B grade sci fi TV. Yeah, it, exactly. Like a B, right. <laughs> like a sci fi original series or something like that. Right. And but just with a bigger budget and bigger stars. Uh, yeah, and yeah. And Kate Beckinsale like, like, talking, much, doing all this narration again. Yeah, and much much like um, Resident Evil, you know, the, the, the director wife. Yeah. Len, 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 Len Wiseman bullshit. Len Wiseman's been yeah. doing this. Oh, yes, and he also did um, two of my favorite movies of all time. Live free or die hard, <laughs> and the remake yeah. of Total Recall. <laughs> yeah, such yeah, great the, the movies. Guy, I, 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 I love know, is, those is, is movies. Is this a person who just just flat flat directing work, uh, flat work in flat projects? He like don't have no working sense of imagination, so everything is just this straightforward sluggy mess. Yeah. Um, look, and as I, as I mentioned, you know, I like Kevin Grievo to death. Love the dude. You know, he's he's like my spirit animal when it comes to Hollywood. But yeah. Uh, that shit, a lot of shit don't work at all, dude. And it's, it's decent world building if you were to put it in its place. Yeah. Uh, but it don't fit in movies. It, I, I don't know where to put this, but frankly, I would like fight up to like get this as a Netflix something, dude. You know? So you that, it would actually work as, as that, you know? We right, have more story. time to develop the story. More time to develop the story and have, make, give a shit about it. Now, and then like make the production value work instead of this lazy ass 
Well, it's a, like you only have one part of it, all the entire franchise. You only have one part I like is where she jump jump on the building and land. Oh, okay. That's I thought you were gonna mention where she where she spin around with the two guns and then the hole went down. Like well, as dumb as it is, yeah. as dumb as that shot is, it's still kind of kickass. Right. Yeah. Still kind of kickass. Yeah, I these these things just don't work or make any sense to me. So, I, you know, it's unfortunate that I don't care about uh, this franchise and how, how lazy everything is done. As I said, put it on Netflix. See, you know, try to get some good writers who give a shit. You see how Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles was? Yes. Instead of Terminator movies, yeah, get people who care about the law. You can yeah. make big law work, you know, but you have to make it personal stories. That's the problem. Everything is just an info dump and an info dump and an info dump. And they stopped the story dead for that shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right, this last movie in particular, George. Jesus. Yeah, it, it did, it did. Um, and this one other, this one of many gripes I have with this show. Uh, where are the humans in all of this? Right. I want to say it, where are the humans this, in all of this. this, one, this because... One, they, 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 this, they, they, this one they don't care. They yeah, just, they, they, there's literally no humans present in yeah, this movie. Yeah, they just movie. say, all right, well, fuck it. Humans yeah. don't matter anymore. Move Cause, on. Because like, you're, to- yeah, yeah. you're talking about this centuries-long war between hu- um between vampires and lichens. Right. So, were the humans in all of this, though? Where, nah, where yeah, were they? they, don't, where they, were they? Don't care. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. And, and, you know, and it's to sit down and ask yourself, well, does humanity know about this war trend? Right. Like, well, stop it, and it, think it, about that for I mean, a minute. I don't, I don't have a problem with that, you know. You know, we see many, many stories of the invisible war thing. You know, it's a secret war amongst blah, blah, blah. All is but fine. But centuries long, though? Oh, yeah, it don't matter because it's secret. Who cares? Like, I don't, that stuff I don't mind. With what I guns, have issue with, <laughs> What I have an issue with, like, you say, okay, like, compared to Blade. Where right. Blade actually account for the humans. Yes. Okay, well, yes. humans will help out. Yeah. Um, this I don't really mind. Like, and we don't know if humans are in part of it, but, like, humans don't matter anyway. That is not the issue. The issue is making me... Essentially, you tell him, you tell him a story, and you tell him to read instead of showing and not telling. You just mm. telling. That is the problem with these movies. Set so a goddamn telling. Tell, 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 tell. This happened. And know, four hundred years ago. And then, da, 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 da. And yeah. what about this group that is supposed to show up? And let's go to this place, and well, they can do this. Like shut the fuck up and just show me shit now. You know. Compare this now to to something that that gamer del Toro will do, where you'll do some excellent world building, and I show you some shit. Like Blade 2, for example. Thank you. You know, you know? Show yeah. you some shit, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm seeing something. This is connected to this, and then visually you're connected. See, yeah. that is my problem with films. Yeah. Too much talent. Yeah, Stop show me, show me. Yeah. Show me. So, yes, so, let me, right, so let me just jump into Blood Wars one time, right? Now, yeah. going into this thing, right? Because it's December already. I, didn't, I, I was lucky enough not to see this in January, like most people, right? So, I, yeah, yeah this has been showing up in a lot of wars, selfless, right? And rightfully yeah. so. Yeah, but I was watching the show. I was watching like the first twenty minutes of it, right? Um, they have a new director this time, Anna Forster, and I guess we're supposed to care because she's a female director. So maybe it might be better, but it's not actually. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <That's>, no disrespect <laughs> to her. No disrespect to her. Um, I know she was she for before this, but yeah. That, yeah, that I, th- I think this is this is actually her her debut film actually. Okay. Her debut feature, right? Okay. So I was watching this thing and I said myself. But this is like an average on the world show, no? You're getting yeah. your, 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 um, your opening narration, you know, um, vampires and lichens have fought over the years and they, they wanted to, to find my daughter, but my I sent my daughter far away that even I don't know where she is. Yeah, and yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. It's like, all right, well, average yeah. stuff. Um, you meet, of course, Selena Reddy. Yeah. The Lycans want to kill her because, well, sorry, they want her to reveal the identity of, sorry, the location of um, where her daughter is. Yeah, they look at She's saying she don't know. Um, yeah. This guy shows up. Um, his name is, Lord, I forget. <laughs> One sec. Uh, yes, David, right, um, who's played by um, T.O. James. So, yeah, he shows up. He helps her out, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, cool. Well, they, they, they have this bond going on so like David is like alright well cool here's what the Lycans wanna wanna wipe us out right now we have this stronghold which is this castle in yeah. heaven knows where and yeah. all the vampires all the well this vampire coven sorry is there um, one of the members of the group is um freaking Charles Danstred from Game yeah. of Thrones yeah 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 Game they of get, Thrones they, they get Game of Thrones people they for they this good people, they get good people yeah because Every time I say it, I was like, wait, you in this bullshit? 
he helps. Yeah. Yeah. And, and good people. Yeah. Right. And, and he's, um well, and like in that stronghold, this female vampire, her name is um, Samira, Samira, sorry. She used to be by like Lara Pulver. I remember her from uh, from Sherlock. Like, I've yeah. seen both of them talking yeah. to each other. Like, but good they, they acted good really good. Yeah, so good what is going on? Um, then we see the Lycans now. Um, mm. one of the well, the leader of the Lycans is um is uh, his name is Ma- um is Marius. So I was gonna say Marcus for a sec. Uh, no, no, Marius. Yeah, but yeah. I forget what he was. He um, was Tobias before? Menzies. He was in um, Game of Thrones. Okay. And okay. Rome. Well, I hardly right. I, I hardly oh, saw right. watch Rome. Right. Yeah, believe it or not. But I remember him from Game of Thrones. He was um Edma Tully. Yeah, he's one of the Tullys, right. right? Yeah. I was like, well, he ain't that bad neither. I mean. It's kind of hammy and cheesy, you know. Him always having the skull because you know it's, it's werewolves and all that. But he not that bad, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, we have to stop these vampires all that kind of stuff. So everything going yeah. standard, right? Yeah. So, um, right. So um, so Celine get invited by David and um, well, some of the other vampires to come by them because they know that she was one of the greatest death dealers. Yes, that's what they call the vampires. She used to go out literally to wipe out. Um, we have lichens that was their job so they bring her in to train these new these young um, cadets basically in debt dealing how to do the art now. I was yeah. like okay again a sort of um, Blade 2 kind of vibe thing where remember in Blade 2 the Vampire Nation wanted Blade yeah. to come and train them to fight to, um, well, to fight the new to strain them, I was them, like well yeah to help them against right right the new yeah. strain of vampires and right you know what I mean? Like I was, I was getting that vibe, and I was like, "All right, but this is this is something new." Yeah, we're getting okay. And then, boy, half ass. That yeah, then, I know what you talk about. I know exactly where you're talking Samira about. Samira and <laughs> not David actually, but Samira and our next fella, uh, one of the fellows who's, who working in the coven, decide to betray Celine yeah. Dread, and they do it in this stupid way, yeah. and then to, to 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 make to to make the the cover up even worse now. They just wipe out all the cadets in one one fell swoop, and blame it on 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 Celine. It's like, oh, well, Celine came and killed everybody, so we had to keep on lockdown, and now we're gonna strap her up and extract her blood because maybe this blood could could help us live, you know, because she have the Walker blood now. So you know that kind of thing. Now. Yeah. And from when that moment hit, when that twist come, I was like, but he just shit the bed right there. You know, yeah. They just shit the Point bed letters. right there. You <laughs> yeah. had a great premise right there. Yeah. It was quite uh, good, yeah. and then you just dropped the ball oh, right there. Point, let's see. Yeah. God. I remember. I remember that moment. It is. I was like, movie going good. And I was like, wait, what? Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Why, why would you do this? Yeah, it's a mess. Total mess. And then the movie don't recover from that at all, eh? Because no, it that does not. That, everything that follow from that make even less sense because of that yeah because like it is it totally unjustified yeah so like you have this subplot now where um where david well the the, the father unfortunately well his father who is charles dance end up um, getting killed i mean nobody cares yeah. so both well both david and Celine now have to go and meet this new coven that somewhere in like these mountains yeah. and they have right so this this is like story real game of okay, thrones so this, kind of vibe no, but, all right, all right. So this is where the story had the it had a chance to turn itself around. Yes. Right? Yes. It had a chance to say, okay, we could pivot again, even though the previous could quote unquote betrayal was complete bullshit and made no sense. Whatever. They could say, alright, you could do something interesting with this. Again, didn't do anything with it. Yeah. It was like Wait, a mixture of Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. Like these right, that, these vampires these, is like right, a mixture absolutely. of like um the nearest Stormborn from you right. know the, the white hair um Gil from, from Game of Thrones. You know, with the dragons, everybody love her. And the elves from Lord of the Rings. It it literally yeah, pretty, felt like that. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is this battle scene that takes place? So I watch this thing and nice. every okay, once in so a while just had to remind yourself this is in modern times, eh? So yeah, then nice. so, so these this coven uh, coming through with like swords and stuff like that, nah. Yeah. You like it's coming in with automatic weapons, eh? It have yeah. a shot, Ricardo. I had to yeah. rewind this thing to make sure I see it properly. Where one of the lichens is firing at Celine. Celine has a shield. Yeah. He just firing at the shield. Yeah. Dumb. <laughs> hit her legs or something. Hit the areas yeah, which dumb. unprotected. No. Hit 
the shield because we had a show that all right so <laughs> it's like they what? had to do okay so they did, they did this thing with the scene where she what happened was she went in the snow and she essentially well she had a resurrection death kind of thing yes 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 right and they, have and they had to stop the show to explain how to it explain works all eh? that bullshit explain too. all that, eh? <laughs> that dude and i tell you if they could i tell you, i swear i swear to god if they cut i they'll cut at least at least 30 minutes of the film could get cut if they, just, if they cut all the exposition stuff, you know? Yeah. It's a lot. It's a ton of yeah. exposition in the movie, Judd. Like, as we oh, meet these people, okay, so now you have to tell me this history. Now you have as to as tell as me as that yeah. David mother was I was a pure blood and everyone yeah, should care. Yeah, and and I love the scene where they had this little, little this little vile thing of blood. Well, it was actually right. in the ring or some so, And right. one of the, the leaders had to, had to um, literally... You know, um, take a little sample of it and like, yes, this is true. David Mother was a pure blood. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. he should be our leader. What? He, he <laughs> got a big arc, you know, and he doing nothing you know, to justify this arc, you know. Yeah, and he isn't given much to do as to all. He is do, no yeah. leader. So nothing is. Yeah, it's just him following. Yes, yeah, him following so, Celine. Okay, so I don't know if it have a film term for this. But in, in video game term, it, there's a term called Ludo narrative dissonance. It's kind of a pretentious term, but it, it works for the most part. Right, well, well, what does that, that mean? Basically, it means that you, where you're playing, what you're playing, not matching up to the actual story. Right? So, like a classic example is, um, well, an example that you might not understand, but Mass Effect had a character called Jack. Right. She, in her, in her cutscene, she busts up three powerful mech robots, right? Because she's, she's this big, powerful biotech character. And but when you play now in the game, you just get taken down by a couple of troops. That is ludo narrative dissonance. It's right. basically the storytelling here this thing, but when you play in the game it don't add up. It don't link now. Right. Um I don't know if it's the I don't know if it's the film version of that, but you know, a lot of film criticism and film sorry, a lot of game criticism uh borrows from film criticism a lot, right? Right. And I don't know if it, I don't know what the if somebody could tell me, I don't know enough about film studies are dumb in that way. Was he when you have such a discrepancy between telling somebody something and seeing something, that that dissonance, right, is a visual dissonance. That's what it is. It's this this character at no point visually I get that he's supposed to be this big central important figure, but the movie keep telling me that shit. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't even look the part at so all. Look the part. The story not the camera not focusing on him and and and, and focusing on his character at all in any important way. Not even the music and all telling me about oh, yeah, about exactly. him. Yeah. No, no right. No, no heights. No story beats timing on the man. But they keep telling me the man important. Like what? Yeah. He's supposed to be this big central character. What? What? You sure? Yeah. Okay. And then and then Never. even right down to the character I Celine herself. Her. Yeah, Celine herself now. Like there's right. two moments actually where she gets. All right. So the first moment is where. Uh, you know, for it is it actually both involve the the villain Marius and the the, the, the lichen, right? right? Yeah. So the first moment in the snow, right? She fighting, she she getting washed from this man, right? Right. But like, right, because he, I forget why he was so strong. Yeah, I forget why. Um, no, no, I get the I get the the, 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 the fact that he the snow and like um you know is 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 on this um this lake this this frozen lake basically, right? Right, I get all that. Up, yeah. But you are a dread. Like badass vampire, na. and you, you know you had three movies to tell us this now, so you just get beat up from this guy just so close to death. No, but you're special. I forget why you're special, but you're special. Okay, right. So, That's not a reason why you're stronger than normal world guys. Right, <laughs> and then there was a moment near the end where, oh my god, I had to watch this again to make sure I was seeing correct. They went back to the place, right? They went back to the to the castle, right? So the to the sort of prison place where these be doing the treated. She okay. locks herself inside her with the with the same with, with Maria, sir. She disabled yeah. the security lock for for um to to open that and close the, the, the sort of thing there. So both of them inside, right? She so she stand up and, and let him beat up the like give her like some yeah, punches yeah, yeah. in the face, right? Right, because all to get one moment for her to get and some get blood and she Yeah. Right. So it was this one moment where the blood come out. Like she she was she was bleeding her. And then, dude, she bites herself. And right. she's seen this flashback with Michael and when they first right. met and when they made love and thing. Just to tell the audience, this is why we should still care about Michael, even though Michael right. yeah, not yeah, in yeah. the yeah, freaking movie. Yeah. Yeah. 
I it's not about like Michael. It's about the daughter. Nobody cares about Michael anymore. He didn't care about mm-hmm. Michael since they killed him off in the last film. We don't care. Why you had to stop the movie to show me what happened in part one? Yeah, it would. You know? It would. But yeah, it's boy. A, yeah, it's, it, it, you're right about that because it's a big... And another thing too, again with the law building slug stuff, it have way too much crap in this movie. You know, it's the way you call 10 pounds of shit in a 5 pound bag now. Yeah. It's too much bullshit in a movie to fit now. Yeah. And that's why, that's why, as I said, much like this kind of totally remind me of um that last shitty thing we did that movie now. Oh Genesis. Ugh, Genesis, right. right. Yeah, it's too much bullshit. It have some okay ideas, it's fine, but you can't fit this in two and a half hours or however long this movie was. How long no, this movie no, was? this movie is an hour and a half, dude. Right, exactly. And I swear, I that, swear about eight minutes, minutes of this was credits. Yeah. Yeah, same and the same thing with with, with the death note, you know, stretch your shit yeah, out. Yeah, stretch it out, stretch it out. Stretch it out. Like stretch I would, out. I would have loved to learn more about the the new covenant, the one who's living in the mountains. Exactly, mountain. you can make like, a whole thing with that. All and of a sudden, you tell them, you tell them they, 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 they can move like quicksilver, they can move at speed, like zoop zoop zoop, right? But when is when Celine, you know, is resurrected now, and she come out with the with the um with the with the <laughs> white boot. yeah with the with the white jacket on now, all of a sudden yeah, she yeah. can move fast. Right. Right. That's well, all. They, as, they, as you say, they, that's they all. Kinda, that's all. That's all. That's all. Justified, but again, right. Again, but, because they have no time, and they, again, they're wasting time on bullshit. That's the problem. So not yeah. only is the movie bogged down with bullshit at the same time, because if it was relying on pure visual language, you might have been able to fit all these plot points in. Maybe. Yeah. I still don't think that would have been the case. The movie would have probably have to be a extra half hour, but because you're explaining and explaining and explaining, yeah. You just double double the, is double the, double um you're doubling down on your bad your bad approach to storytelling no? yeah so not only you need to flesh this out we're fleshing it out in all the war- wrong ways we right do flesh it. and and some of us want to say they're quick about the whole top speed thing you know like when she came in for that final battle right before she locks herself in right. she was moving fast right she was moving fast so right. why when she was in that chamber thing she just not do any whole moving fast thing she just yeah. letting this yeah. man hit her Right. What? Yeah. So she could bite herself and see Michael? Like, yeah, yeah. if you have That's super speed now, so no, why did you use it for? Yeah, dumb. Yeah, I, but yeah, I, this. Like you movie have bigger problems and stuff like that. So I don't like nitpick. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's that more. Point, yeah, like, there's, there's more stuff we could talk about, but it's right. just really a waste of talent. Because, yeah. you know, he, love or hate the movies. I still think that Kate Beckinsale still does her, her role justice there. You know, as right. Celine, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's one note by now. You know, she right. could kind of do it if she sleep already. But it's like, well, at least she, she put in some effort. At least she, she tried. Is it like right. Mila um, Jovic? Oh, no, like, Kate, Kate Beckinsale is still bae, you know. She's still cute and she still look great in the role. Especially in like her age and, saw. you know, the outfit and everything. Yeah. yeah, she's still looking great for her age. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, well, it's, you know, it's clearly she damn man shooting for she. So, yeah, to make she look good now. Of course, yeah, yeah. Right. So it's like all of that, all of that's fine. She look good, like how the shoot she and how she look. She look great, you know. Yeah. She great screen presence, but boy, that will build in story. Everything else is just a hot mess. Yeah, boy. So, oh, by the way, yeah, this this the female villain. What the fuck with that? Arc? <laughs> yes. That arc, I'm Samara. Yeah. Is that this whole them. thing yes. about her wanting to have D Walker blood, right? That oh, oh. It had this scene that had me real laughing, right? Where she yeah. had this, this, this. Big, uh, I don't want to even call it a this. All right, she she had like this glass container of of our uh, Celine's blood there, right? Right. So right. she bought a drink it, right? She making this right. such a dramatic moment, right? Yeah. So she just drinking this thing, eh? and then afterwards she had the audacity to just throw the throw the, the glass eh? onto yeah, the floor, you know? Yeah. Because true. yes, I'm a day walker now. I don't need any more of this. Blow. Yeah, dumb. I was like. What are you throwing dumb. the rest of blood for? Yeah, dumb. <laughs> dumb. Dumb. Dumb movie. Uh, yeah, quick, just give me rated. You got tired of this one. Uh, one out of five, of course. <laughs> my rated, my rated, I've given it. Uh, globe. Go see yeah, this is Gag Globe. This Gag Globe. Don't spend your money. Go see no, the Globe. No. Go see the National. Don't spend your money. Um, go, on, go with some friends, drink some beer. You'll see it. It's some, it causes some old bullshit. Yeah, uh, a lot of it doesn't work. Is a mess. Um, yeah, to f- I, I don't know how to fix it, fix it, but basically, my attitude towards it is this needs to stretch out in a Netflix run. Eight yeah. episodes, yeah, yeah, give it a better budget. Well, you know, on Netflix, it'll be fine for the budget because it's not like it's the worst thing. It'll look okay, mm-hmm. um, for the most. 
It, although it, although the, I could argue there's there's really overdo it on the whole night scenes like everything that, just yeah, had to yeah, be yeah, all night and nocturnal night, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But well, for, I didn't really mind. Um, it it looked okay at times. Uh, I didn't really mind a lot of the the action was kind of bad though. Eh, I'll say, but still, you can yeah. just sit down and just think out the action a little better. It's not like it was bad intrinsically, but it was just cheap. And right. Again, you half ass it. Oh, and uh, as, as I said, with the whole nocturnal thing, I like how in the castle it says. Uh, one more minute before before the sun rises or something right. like that. There, that was so funny. I thought he was gonna do some daylight scenes. And, uh, nope, nah. it's just them, just just it's a set like, of interior shots. Shit, yeah. Everybody talking yeah. about, oh, we must do this, and you can't take the throne and blah 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 blah. Real Game of Thrones s stuff, and that's yeah, what yeah. I would say. No, no, yeah, it was it was clearly influenced by a lot of Game of Thrones stuff. Um, yeah, you know, it went in that direction to cater to that audience. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, it, this this didn't work. And the thing is, when I went to see it, it had a big audience it had a big crowd eh? of course like, i mean it had a big crowd so it's like it it i don't know how much money it made but it looked like it makes some all right money uh yeah it has, it, this, that, this had an audience though. they get me wrong you know there's an audience right. for this but i don't think they will right. care it, about this it, movie from well sorry this franchise going forward John. yeah and it was it was a real kitschy movie admittedly uh, the whole franchise is but you know whatever yeah uh yeah as i say i give it a globe you know go see it in globe or at least well it, it out in 90 years anymore long long gone but uh yes have some fun with it you know pop the dvd get drunk you know, to this beers, get, get drunk, drunk to this drunk you know popcorn and popcorn smarties and <laughs> popcorn smarties nudes uh beer and yeah good. well if it is to keep your eyes open yes um like i said before i give it this a one out of five of course it sucked right. um the whole game of thrones thing because as we mentioned before this borrows so much from game of thrones that this whole in right. fighting stuff and you know it's about this clan of, uh, discovered yeah. after discovered yeah, yeah, yeah. it is like you don't care about none of this right? yeah. um, the mere fact that humans still not involved in this is still funny to me uh, again, now, all this stuff going on it, all this stuff going on and nobody no news report that yeah, about this all trade stations occupied by like kids are like yeah like where, where are the humans in all of this yeah you're but, like, yeah. like one fella without going to try to get a job or something yeah but this <laughs> was like a real piss poor attempt I try to replicate Game of Thrones. And that just of yeah, the yeah, aesthetic. Those, yeah, but of the serious system, you know, like I supposed yeah. to care that the the, the, the vampires we, want to fight the Lycans. I've seen four movies with this. Why should yeah. I care No, It doesn't matter to me. And then of yeah. course you have to have the infighting within the vampires because you can't trust nobody. Of course you have to yeah. the, uh, betray Celine because movie. You know what I mean? You've seen this before. And right. I felt right. like, you know, the the setup, the first actor he was doing right. something different. I was like, okay, we're gonna get something a little bit different. Might be good, but nah, nah, something I different. I and then it just fell apart from there. I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't think it would have been this bad. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, like I thought it would have been like, well, I'll just hate right. it on it because it's a it's a underworld movie. But right. <laughs> I watch this thing like, well, it no, it's just a bad movie. Period. Yeah, it's really bad. It's really honest. You know, but yeah, this this definitely gonna be on my worst stuff. Listen, this is gonna be on yours too, but. Yeah, Unless yeah, I already had it on my list. I didn't think. I mean, I have about five or six films that I just have in my head that like, floating around. Like, oh yeah, this this was this. Yeah, year, oh, yeah, this this came out. How can I forget? Right, this bullshit. So yeah, but uh, but if, if 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 unless you are a diehard serious uh, underworld fan, right. you will not care for this show at all, at all. <laughs>